Office safety is perhaps more important than safety in a manufacturing environment. Most people would argue that there are more potential hazards in a manufacturing facility than offices, and they would be correct. However, what makes safety in the office very important is the fact that everyone does not consider safety as part of their office work responsibilities. Generally, an office is neat and well organized, no heavy lifting, no forklifts, manufacturing equipment. But the potential for injury is there. The most important part of office safety is thinking safety on the job in an office environment. If you look at injury statistics, 85 to 98 percent of all accidents, injuries, result from unsafe acts of employees. That's right, unsafe acts. Not thinking about safety, taking shortcuts, not following safety or job procedures. All these things lead to accidents and injuries. It's not that office employees intentionally want to hurt themselves or that they are irresponsible. It's just human nature not to think that an office environment is potentially hazardous. In fact, in those offices where employees take the time for safety, don't take shortcuts and follow job rules, offices are a very safe place to work. Let's begin our review of office safety with electrical safety. Almost all equipment runs on electricity, and it's safe to use if you follow proper safety procedures. Report hazards to your supervisor when you identify them as hazards. Inspect electrical cords for frays, cracks, or cuts. Check out electrical receptacles for damage. If your equipment is grounded, make sure the third prong on your electrical plug is properly installed and functioning properly. Let's look at two different electrical plugs. One has a two-prong plug, the other has a three-prong plug. The two-prong plug indicates that your equipment has double insulation inside the equipment, such as a hand tool, computer, or other device, that will afford some electrical shock protection in the event of a short or malfunction of the equipment. It's called double insulation. For equipment that is not protected by double insulation, a third wire and prong, called the ground, is installed on your equipment. Should a malfunction occur, electricity will flow from the equipment to ground, therefore providing shock protection. If this third prong or ground is broken, damaged, or missing, there is no shock protection in the event of a malfunction. Additionally, it's up to you to take the responsibility to inspect your equipment for potential hazards before you use it. Everyone knows that water and electricity doesn't mix, so never operate any electrical equipment in, around, or near water. This includes sweaty palms, because this moisture could create a potential hazard. Be sure to turn off electricity before beginning to make repairs on any electrical equipment. An important part of office safety is dressing for work. Each company has specific rules for clothing and footwear, but it's recommended that open-toed shoes or sandals not be worn in the workplace. Wear comfortable shoes with low heels, which reduces leg strain and slips and falls. Chemical safety, believe it or not, is a concern in the office environment. Quite often, we use these same chemicals in our homes and don't think too much about them, but they can be hazardous. The best advice is to read and follow the instructions and warning labels printed on the chemicals before using it. Simple chemicals, such as cleaning supplies, copier toner, and other potentially hazardous material can be found in almost every office. Your employer maintains a list of these chemicals with a Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS. These MSDSs are supplied by the chemical manufacturer, and they contain a variety of technical information about a particular chemical, including personal protective equipment required, first aid procedures, potential health hazard, and other information that is available for your use. If you want more information about a particular chemical, ask your supervisor for the material safety data sheet for that specific chemical or substance. Certainly, fire prevention is of concern to everyone. 
Be sure you know where fire extinguishers are located and how to use them in the event of an emergency. Know where emergency exits are located, but never use elevators in the event of an emergency. Use stairs if your work area is above the first floor. Keep your work area clear. This means don't block emergency exits, fire extinguishers, or electrical panels. If you have sprinkler systems, never stack material within 18 inches to 36 inches of a sprinkler head. Keep storage areas clean and neat, and empty trash frequently to prevent a buildup of combustible materials. Read and understand your company's emergency plan in the event of a fire, earthquake, or other emergency. If you're not sure about emergency procedures, ask questions. During an emergency, it's too late to learn. Next, let's review some basic safe lifting techniques. Every now and then you'll have to lift something, even if it's only to pick up a piece of paper off the floor. The most important thing to remember is to keep your back aligned in its natural curvature. You accomplish this by bending your legs, not your back. In an industrial environment, employees are taught to place their feet between the object they're going to lift, then bend down close to that object. Get a good palm grip on the object and pull it close to your body. After the object is placed close to your body, then stand up. This way you're using the power in your legs and not your back. The same thing applies to anything you lift, heavy or not. Bend your legs to keep your back in its natural curvature. The reason for this is quite simple. Your back is composed of bones or vertebrae, nerves, and a fibrous, liquid-filled disc. The discs separate the bones from one another and afford your back flexibility. The discs act as shock absorbers. If you keep your back in its natural curvature, those discs are spread evenly across the surface of the bones and this reduces the pressure on those discs. When lifting anything, don't twist your back, as this too is quite damaging to your back and disc. If you stretch when lifting, you can also damage ligaments in your back. Actually, these fibrous tissues will tear and can be quite painful. If something is too heavy to lift safely, get help. Lifting injuries are preventable, but you have to think safety on every lift and keep your back in its natural curvature. If you do that, you won't experience back injuries. Okay, the next safety tip relates to slips and falls. These injuries can be very serious, so the best advice is to prevent slips and falls. Prevention means watch where you walk. Most tripping injuries occur from slipping on carpet, water on a slick surface, people stepping into holes or other objects because they were not watching where they were walking. The next category of slips and falls is using improper ladders. Using chairs or boxes as a means of extending your reach is totally unsafe. Use the proper step stool, ladder, or other approved means when you need to reach to another elevation and be sure the ladder is in good condition. Don't run at work. We know everyone is busy and you're in a hurry, but an injury isn't worth the few seconds you'll save by running. When walking up or down a flight of stairs, hold the handrail. If you slip or trip, your hand on the handrail will prevent a more serious fall. Ergonomics is a new word in today's workplace. It basically means fitting the workstation to meet the needs of the individual. Because of the different body shapes and height of individuals, a chair may be excellent for one employee, but may not fit another person. Ergonomics means you have to adjust the equipment to fit the individual. Take a look at your work area, equipment, and surroundings to make sure they fit your particular needs. If you can adjust or change something to make your job easier and more efficient, discuss this with your supervisor and try to get these changes made. Working with video display terminals is another area for improvement. Adjusting your chair to fit the work. Adjusting the monitor to fit the needs of your eyes. Take quick breaks more often to lessen the tension of working at the video display terminal. 
In offices, most individuals will find the proper fit for their equipment to their bodies. If you can't make a change, discuss this with your supervisor, as there are always solutions to problems. Okay, a few more tips and we're finished. Before you use any equipment, be sure you have been properly trained and authorized to use the equipment. During your work shift, if you see a hazard, correct it. If the correction is beyond your expertise, notify your supervisor of the hazard so it can be corrected before it creates an injury. If you are injured on the job, report your injury immediately when it occurs. Don't wait for several days. Report all injuries when they occur. Every company has a policy of no alcohol or drugs at any time. These policies are established to ensure all employees have a safe environment in which to work. A safety orientation program won't cover everything you need to know about safety in the workplace. It's more of a reminder of some things you can do to get started. But you'll also learn more about safety as you become familiar with your job. Whether you're a new employee or an experienced employee, safety awareness is the key to success. The more you think about safety, the safer you'll be. Every time you use a paper cutter or staple machine, a split-second thought about how to use it safely will pay big dividends. There's nothing exotic about safety. It's common sense and good judgment. When people begin to take shortcuts or forget about safety, that's usually when an injury occurs. Take safety seriously. Think about how you can apply safety to everything you do and act in a responsible manner. You can't go wrong. Thank you.